Let's get into this. Father, thank you so much for your word. It is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. We need you. We don't live by bread alone, but we live by every word that comes out of your mouth. Your word is rich. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was you. And everything that was made was made by and through your word. Therefore, everything that will be, everything that we will build, everything that we will become will take place as a result of the word. So God, make the word flesh and allow it to dwell among us here that we might touch it and feel it and ultimately become everything that the word has instructed. May it unlock, may it bless, may it edify, may it heal, may it set us ablaze with Pentecost fire. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Do me a favor, say something real nice to someone next to, have a seat and let's get into this. I love you. I love you. Say something nice to you. Hey, girl. Hi. How you feel? Good. Don't don't do that. Don't, unless you you have legal rights to do that. But. <laughs> God bless you. We we love you so much. Uh, we were praying about what today was going to look like, and uh, again, it's rare that we both are here and we both have words from God, and so we decided to just both share those words and uh, so we're going to flow we don't necessarily know exactly what this is going to look like how it's going to happen we've never done this before we did a three-way with uh it was me well you started it i was in the middle and then bishop jakes finished it on easter right and that was just what an experience but we've never done this before and so amen <laughs> and so um let me start by saying as i sought the lord about his word for you on this Pentecost Sunday, and we cannot overlook the fact that today is Pentecost Sunday, where the Spirit of God fell and the world changed. And before the Spirit of God fell, as it pertains to Pentecost, Pentecost is the commemoration of when the children of Israel received the law or the word for the first time under the leadership of Moses. And so they would commemorate that, they would have feasts, and they would all come to Jerusalem, and they would have feasts to commemorate when the word came for the first time, and it coincided with harvest. Isn't that interesting? It coincided with harvest. It got dark in here, and I don't feel like it was supposed to get dark in here, so somebody make it undark in here, because let there be light is what the Bible says. Uh, come on, if we I lose, I need some lose up in here. Come on, give me some lose. There we go, that feels like lose. And then I want to see some lose in the house because it's not about just us, it's about them. But we'll figure it out. I'll give you two or three seconds to do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or the Lord might be testing this thing called long suffering. Glory to God. And so, so it also, the, the, the word, it was also, it was also about harvest. So it coincided with harvest. It was seven weeks and then there was harvest, 49. And then on that next day, it was the 50th day. And so Pentecost represents the, the delivering of the word, God giving the word, and it's also harvest. And I started thinking about Pentecost and the word itself. And one of the things that God taught me about the word, and this is important, the word is both seed and harvest. It's both seed and harvest. Let me explain. It's harvest in that that word will come to pass. In other words, the coming to pass is already in the word when God gives you the word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when God gives you a word, it's not like this word has to like become something other than what it already is. When God gives you a word, the word is already harvest. So that's what makes the word harvest. But the word is also seed. And it's seed in that you have to sow it, you have to work it, and you have to wait for it. So God gives you a word. That word is already fulfilled in God. That's harvest. The word is harvest, but it is also seed. It's the only thing that's both seed and harvest. Because it's seed in that you have to participate now in the word that God gave you. That's why Hebrews says that the word didn't profit some of them not being mixed with faith. Yeah. So it's seed in that you have to sow it, you have to work it, and you have to wait for it. That's how we look at seed. So the word is both seed and harvest. And so the word that God gave me for you and what he wants me to really impress upon you 
is the reality that you have an inheritance. That you have an inheritance. In other words, there is something that God has set aside with you in mind. You have, you have, you have an inheritance. And so, and so um, a few things about this particular inheritance, and then we're going to go to Scripture. This inheritance that, that God has set aside for you can't be seized. He, hear me, hear me. They, 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 no one can steal this from you. It can't be seized. It's reserved in a dimension where the enemy cannot access. So it's yours. It can't be seized, but it can go unclaimed. Uh -oh. Are you hearing me? It can go unclaimed. So let's go to the word real quick. I want to, and this is Paul and, and Ephesians chapter one. And, and what I, Paul, uh, you talk about run on sentences. I just and I get it because Paul was just so full of revelation that once he thought he was stopping, boom, the Holy Ghost would kick in again and he'd have to continue because God, what God did with Paul, and I believe that God will do it with you if you will dig in and press into God, is God made him rich in revelation. Anybody want to be rich in revelation? Yeah, 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 yeah. So here's Paul, he's talking, and I'm just going to pull out and I'm going to read, and I'll stop when I feel like I need to stop, and then we'll say a few things, and then I'm going to tag my partner. Paul says in Ephesians 1, beginning of verse 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, now I want you to pay attention to this, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. That is important. Let me give some context. Paul is talking to relatively new believers, and these are believers who came out of the world. I don't know about you, but I came out of the world. My background is business and technology. The, the, way, the fact that I'm preaching is, if you'd have come to me 25 years ago and say, PT, you, you'd be preaching, and you'd be pastoring and everything, I would be like, what have you been smoking, and where can I find it? <laughs> So I can, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> TMI, no, you need to know where your pastor came from. <laughs> and so the church of Ephesus, they were, they were saved now, but, but they, 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 you know, they had a little interesting cultures and stuff like that, right? And, uh, and so what Paul is doing with them is he's trying to build them up. He's trying to train them. He's trying to passionately encourage them concerning what they possessed. And that's going to always be one of the most difficult times, the difficult things rather, for the believer is to really unpack what they got when they got Jesus. Come on. When you got Jesus, what did you get? Peter says in one place that God has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Essentially, if I might paraphrase, through the knowledge. It says through the knowledge of the one who has called us to virtue and excellence. So what I don't know, so watch this, ignorance is not bliss. Because what I don't know, what if I have something and I don't know I have it and I can't move in it and I'm desperately walking around like a slave, like an orphan, like, like I, I'm poverty or grief stricken. What if I have something that is the answer to what I'm praying for and the only challenge is I don't know what I got. And that is actually the truth with believers. David said in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Better translation is, he studied in the Hebrew, I have no lack. Now, oftentimes we walk around with the consciousness of lack. And the consciousness of lack, watch this, is the ignorance of abundance. Wow. Yeah. So he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I have no lack. In other words, I don't perceive lack. I feel the spirit of God. I got to get through this. I don't even, once I align myself with God, the way that I'm supposed to align myself with God, not only will I not have lack, but I won't perceive lack. And one of the things that keeps you from abundance is a lack consciousness. You're always looking at what I don't have, but real kingdom people aren't worried about what they don't have. They have a have mentality. Are you hearing me? So Paul, I digress. So Paul, Paul is trying 
to get them to know, and I need my time, because I don't want to go into her time, so put my time up there, pull five or. <laughs> so Paul is trying to teach them what they got. So, good. so he says, I love the language. He says, blessed be God, the God of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, who has blessed us. Look at the language. Who has blessed us with, I want to say it right, every, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Okay, so some of you didn't get, you, you got demotivated right there. Because you don't pray for a spiritual blessing. When you think about what you pray for, you, you don't pray for a spiritual blessing because you don't think that your problem is a spiritual problem. Yeah. Come on. When you pray, you're praying for, for some sort of earthly problem. <laughs> Not recognizing that, watch this, to every earthly problem, there is a spiritual remedy. How do I know? Because the spirit preceded the natural. Come on. So, so if I had to choose what, where I wanted God to bless me, God, bless me in the earthly or bless me in the heavenly. You, you my assistant now, baby. Thank you. I appreciate that. So if God had, if I had to choose between what dimension I would want God to bless me in, the earthly dimension or the spiritual dimension, that would be a no-brainer. Bless me in the spiritual dimension. Because if you bless me in the spiritual dimension, I'm blessed spiritually. And what will happen in the earthly dimension happens automatically because it happens on earth as it is in heaven. There's a connection between the spiritual and the natural. But it may not work the other way. What should it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses the soul, right? So, so we got to keep moving. Thank you so much. I got 12 minutes. All right. So, so the second thing we want to understand, the first thing was that we have an inheritance. The second thing is this inheritance now happens, seed and harvest inheritance, through these spiritual blessings that we have received in heavenly places. In other words, if you're taking notes, write this down. You have predestined resource for accomplishments and exploits. That's so good. When he says, when he says that he has blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, what he's telling us, that's our inheritance. Yeah. And what that means is we have predestined resource for accomplishments and exploits. I use that word exploits intentionally because da Daniel talks about when he's prophesying about the last days, he says that those who know their gods are going to be strong and they're going to do great exploits so you're called not to just get by not to just survive not just make it through the week but there is an anointing a predestined anointing and grace on your life to build incredible things to build banks come on to build business to I wish I had some people that would really come alive and understand there's an anointing on your life to build something, to build communities, to build neighborhoods, witty inventions and ideas, and it's already been given to you. I've got to move through this. I've already given it to you. It's an inheritance of power to produce transformation, personal transformation communal or transformation in whatever your community is transformation in your industry it is amazing I'm sitting down and I'm watching industries be shaken up right now and every time there is a shaking there is space being made for those that God is awakening are you hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth 
So when you see things being disrupted, when you see kings rising and falling, that means you need to get in position because that thing that you have been praying about, that thing that you have been waiting for, the time is now. Come on, don't you feel a shift? Uh huh. It's your time. Do me a favor. Look at somebody and say, It's your time. It's your time. You've been faithful. You have been resilient. You have been adaptable. You have been praying. You have been consistent. You have walked in your integrity. And I hear God saying, It's your time. If I was my father in law, I'd say, Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. And I'm gonna remix it. You're ready, you're ready, you're ready. 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 You're ready, you're ready, you're ready, you're ready. You're ready, you're ready, you're ready, you're ready. Hey! You're ready. You're ready. You're ready. Everything in your life up to this point was preparing you for the moment that you're standing in don't say wait two months until the harvest no baby pentecost it's now baby they were in the upper room waiting and praying and then something happened and it shook everything come on that's your word give god worship Catch it, catch it, catch it. It's true, it's true. You ready, you ready, you ready. You ready, you ready, you ready. You ready, you ready, you ready, you ready. You ready, you ready, you ready, you ready, you ready. You ready, you ready, you ready, you ready, you ready. You ready, you ready, you ready, you ready, you ready. You ready. You're ready. You're ready because you were getting ready. <laughs> there is a very deceiving concept. The concept of there. When I get there, I'm almost there. One day, I'll be there. Not realizing that there is here. And when you get there, it will still be there. <laughs> because it's both seed and harvest. Okay, I got a couple more things I need to say. No, I'm not taking my time. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Oh no, I heard your word, it's brilliant. I was there when you rehearsed it. I'm about to get out of the way. Inheritance to produce transformation. Dominion. Watch this. Not over people. God, God never gave man dominion over people. That's right. But over principalities. Come on, somebody. Authority. An inheritance of wisdom and stature and favor. But one of the things that gets in the way, I believe that Paul addresses in Ephesians 3. I just need two minutes. So after he says that he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, I bet that won't happen again. After he says that, Christ has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he, I'm going to just go through it real quick, a little couple things I want to pull out. It says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, you're chosen. That we would be, look at this, this is interesting, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now that's powerful. Here's one of the reasons that keeps us from laying hold of our inheritance is because we don't necessarily feel like we're qualified for these high and lofty things. And so you can hear prophecy after prophecy 
and they're good prophecy, but, but there is something in your head, watch this, that will only allow you to believe for so much. So if the prophecy gets too high or too big or too wonderful or too beautiful, then there is an internal critic and an internal accuser that says, but not for me. Yeah, I'm going to drive down your street a little bit. It's not even doubt. It's not even doubt in God's ability. It's not even the fact that you don't believe that God can do it. You just don't believe that God can do it for yeah. or that God is unwilling to do it for you. And he says something crazy like, and remember who he's talking to. These, you know, they, they were freaks, okay? Yeah. Former freaks. And I suspect in a room this size. <laughs> Gotta move on, got three minutes, all right. It says that he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame. Let me keep reading. Without holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So I'm adopted. I'm, I, I, before, watch this. Before I was even born, before I got my freak on, too far. Before I went through my journey of experimentation, better yeah Be before he put me in my mother's womb he chose me to be blameless holy and blameless watch this chosen and accepted so God chose me knowing what I would walk through he sees the end from the beginning which means that your cray cray did not throw him off Look at the capacity of God's love and redemptive perspective. This is very important because if you don't believe that you are worthy, you will never lay hold of it. And this is why Jesus came. Jesus came because you weren't worthy and you couldn't be worthy. So he took your unworthiness and my unworthiness and put it in his body, nailed it to the cross and put it to death on your behalf once and for all. And he says, if you live in me, it won't be by your own might. It won't be by your own strength. It won't be by your own righteousness. It'll be by my righteousness that you get this inheritance. That's important. I've got a minute and 54 seconds. That's important. So you have to embrace divine acceptance. But if we keep reading, we're talking about this inheritance. And I, I think I just want to jump down. Uh, and I don't, I don't have my numbers. So I'm just, I'm just going to read it real quick. It says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. It's going to be a long sentence. According to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, I told you it was long, which he purposed in himself, this is God doing all this for you, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him, in Christ. In him, Christ, also, we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted should be to the praise of his glory. Now here's what I'm getting at. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, so you trusted, you heard the gospel, you heard the word, and you ultimately believed. Having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee, that word literally means pledge or down payment. So the down payment of your inheritance is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the down payment. So it is of the substance or the essence of the fullness of your inheritance. Which means that the Holy Spirit 
is the means by which you will acquire the totality of your possession. And that's what was given on Pentecost Sunday. So, and I'm going to land here. So, your relationship with the Holy Spirit becomes vital to walking out your days. Because if I, because the Holy Spirit is going to lead me in and to and through and empower me to do my exploits. Not by might, no by power, but by the Spirit. Last verse, John 16, 33, it says this. When the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth has come, it says, He will guide you into all truth, the truth of your inheritance. So you need a relationship with the Holy Spirit, and we're going to pray at the end for you to, if you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you're going to get a better relationship with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to order your steps into your inheritance, right? But it says, he will guide you into all truth, for he will speak not of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. This is why Jesus was so effective. And this is why he fulfilled his mission, because he only moved according to what he saw, perceived, and heard. And so you're going to become more circumspect than you have ever been. You're not going to be random anymore. You're going to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to say, go left. And you're going to go left. The Holy Spirit is going to say, take two steps back. And you're going to take two steps back. And you're going to prosper as a result of it. Because he will tell you the things which are to come. That word that was translated come is an interesting word. It means come or go. So the Holy Spirit literally is going to guide you and lead you into how to come and how to go. Honey. I want to go home. <laughs> I am intrigued by the idea of inheritance because I recognize why so many of us struggle with claiming our inheritance. It's something that logically, it sounds good spiritually, we want to receive it, but there's something we must recognize about the way that God functions in order for us to lay hold of our inheritance. The definition of inheritance is a late Middle English word, and it means being admitted as heir. Part of the reason why we struggle with our inheritance is because we don't recognize that it's not happening in succession. When we hear the word inheritance and we think about our family, we think about a great aunt. I'm sure some of you have received the same email that I have received from some man telling me that I have an aunt somewhere who has something for me to claim. I know all of my aunties and none of them have been in a position as they yet live and breathe to pass anything down to me. And so if we don't see it in our bloodline, if we don't see it in our community, then it is difficult to believe that we have an inheritance. But what we need to understand about God is that when God gives us an inheritance, he doesn't do it in ways that we can track. That oftentimes God skips the line in order to give us an inheritance. And when you recognize that God skips the line in order to give you an inheritance, it makes you question what God has given you because you don't see anyone else holding the thing that God has given you. So you don't see it as an inheritance. You see it as something that could or could not happen. You see it as something that may or may not be plausible because there's nothing in your circle that confirms that what you have you deserve. Nothing in your circle that confirms that what you possess is actually something that you can manifest. And so you have this gift, you have this talent, and God told me specifically to let you know that the gift, the talent, the vision that he's given you is not just a gift, talent, or vision, it is an inheritance. Oh God, no, we gotta really let that marinate for a minute. It's not just an idea. It's not just some concept. God has given you an inheritance for his vision for where you're positioned. Yeah. Oh. I didn't just deposit that into your spirit. 
that was an inheritance that started with God. And that gift and that talent is something that started with God because it has a position here in the earth. And so if you see it as your gift and as your talent, you will see it as something that could or could not happen. But when you recognize that this thing came from God, so there is a mandate on what must happen with this gift that came from God. It's not just my song. It's not just my movie. This is something that started with God. Some of you are dealing with things that are an inheritance from God. And when you realize that it is an inheritance from God, that's when you start recognizing that no weapon formed against you will prosper. It's not because of who I am. It's because of what I'm carrying. And when God gave me this inheritance, God had a strategic plan for where it would land in the earth. I want to take 10 seconds and let you thank God that he didn't just give you something. He gave you his something. He didn't just give you an idea. He gave you something that came from him. This thing has started with God. That means God's going to finish it. That means all you got to do is contain what God gave you. That means all you got to do is sit back and be a good steward over what God gave you. This thing This is God's dream, baby. It's not yours. This is God's movie, baby. It's not yours. This is God's family, baby. It's not yours. This is God's gift, baby. It's not yours. You got to know you're anointed for this. You got to know that they may be doing their thing, but their thing may not be God's thing. Because when God gave it to you, God gave it a strategic mandate in the earth. I'm going to need you to turn me up in the monitors. You have an inheritance and that's why it keeps you up at night and that's why you can't just let it go and that's why you wish you could just be like everyone else but for some reason God skipped the line and gave you a vision that only you understand for some reason God skipped the line and gave you an inheritance on what the industry could look like God skipped the line and showed you what family could look like God skipped the line I wish I had about five people in this room who were willing to admit I don't really have no business in this room but God skipped the line I don't have no business with this dream, but God skipped the line, and when he skipped the line, he positioned me in a space that he knew I could occupy, even though I wasn't sure. Sometimes you got to trust your inheritance over what you see. Sometimes you got to trust what God gave you over the circumstance in which it must exist. Because this inheritance, it didn't start with me. It started with God, he went out of his way to make sure I could have it. He went out of his way to make sure that it would invade the earth by any means necessary. If you could see what God gave you, then God would not have positioned you where he placed you because it would mean that he's already filled the earth in that spot. The fact that you cannot see anybody doing the thing that you have been called to do, the fact that you cannot see anybody taking up space the way you have been called to take up space, you could let it scare you or you could let it empower you, you could let it confirm that I must be the one who's going to bring it to this city. I must be the one that's going to bring it to my family. I must be the one that is anointed to let it happen right here. Oftentimes, when we have an inheritance, it is because God skips the line. I am reminded of David in scripture, the least likely, the youngest, anointed king, not the biggest, not the baddest, not the oldest, But God skipped the line to put him in position. He is anointed to be king. But just because he is anointed to be king doesn't mean that he is established to be king. Anointed in this room, but not established. Oh, man. Can we talk for a minute? about the discomfort 
and being anointed but not established. Can we talk about the nomadic lifestyle of the one who is anointed but has no place to really build? Has no people, has no community to really build to the fullness what God has given them. And what happens in most of these instances, when we recognize that we have been anointed but we are not positioned in a way that will allow the anointing to be established, is that most of us begin to modify the vision to fit our position. When we look at David's journey, he was anointed as king, but he was still in the field. And then we see that he ends up going to fight the Philistines and he ends up being a part of Saul's court. And it may have looked like maybe God didn't really anoint me to be king. God anointed me to be by the king. Because when we feel like we're anointed for one thing, but then life doesn't look like what we've been anointed for, instead of trusting what God gave us, we begin modifying the vision. Second guessing what God said. Thinking to ourselves, maybe I'm just supposed to be close to it. Not actually it. There is something that happens when we recognize that anointing, first of all, is disruptive. Oh. It disrupted David's lifestyle. And then when he finally got into the king's court, where it should have been smooth sailing, it was disruptive again. And when I found him in a text in 2 Samuel, I could not help but imagine what it was like to be him having gone on a journey where it looked like he would only be close enough but never established. Man, I don't know who you are in this room, but God gave you a vision. God anointed you, and he gave you an inheritance when he gave it to you, but sometimes we get frustrated when our lives don't look like what God said. And in those moments, it is very easy for us to start acquiescing and start changing our mind, thinking that God got it wrong. I don't know who you are and you're trying to protect yourself from disappointment. Trying to keep yourself from wanting it too bad, even though God said it's okay for you to move in this direction. But you're nervous and you're afraid that if I put all of myself into this and it still isn't exactly what God said that I'm going to be wounded in some way. I hear God saying that it's going to take all of you to really become who I've called you to be. And you cannot wait until you are established to reach the fullness of who you are. I hear God saying that you've got to release the fullness of your anointing right where you are because where you are is anointed to take you to the next dimension it is the thing that leads to the thing where you are right now in this season is anointed to develop you where you are right now is anointed to help you see the landscape when we look at David's life and we see that he was in charge of the military and then he was hiding from Saul he was anointed during all of these things yeah. And it would look like he was getting pushed further and further away. But what I saw in 2 Samuel is actually that even though it looked like he was being scattered, that God was taking him on a tour of what would eventually be under his domain. Oh, I wish I could say that better. It looked like he was scattered, but God was actually equipping him so that he understood all of the territory assigned to him. I don't know where you are and where you feel scattered, but I hear God saying that it'll make sense in a minute, but I need you to bring the fullness of your anointing to where you are, because when I finally establish you, I want you to know that land like the back of your hand. I want you to know that family like the back of your hand. I want you to know everything there is to know so that when you rule you don't rule with ignorance so that when you rule you rule with humility so that when God establishes you you know for sure that you put in work oh God that cannot easily be undone 
Can I tell you in 2 Samuel, David is in a position where he's ruling just part of the territory. It's been, I think, 16 years before he rules over all of Israel. And he's got one portion of it that he's king over. And he could have been satisfied with that. He wasn't trying to claim the rest of Israel. But then there's an assassination and now there's a vacancy. King's fallen and there's a vacancy for him. And when I was reading in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 10, it said that David knew the Lord was with him. Oh, God, help me to say it. He knew the Lord was with him. When they came to him and told him, we want you to be king, he was ready for that because he had had such a nomadic lifestyle where all he could depend on is that the Lord was with him. And so when the doors open, he realized that the Lord was with him. He's in this flow because he recognizes that now is not my time to be established. Now is just my time to flow. And because it's just my time to flow, all I'm looking for right now is God that you're with me. Lord, if you're with me, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. Lord, if you're with me, if you need me to sit down, I'll sit down. Lord, if you're with me, if you tell me to move, I'll move. He sees that the Lord is with him. But as the text continues... The neighboring king comes to him and brings him cedar wood and plank and carpenters and masonry. And he says, the king says, we're going to build you a house. Oh, I wish I had a little bit. I got five minutes. We're going to build you a home. Can you put that on the screen for me? There it is. He sends them the cedar trees and carpenters and masons and they build David a house and verse 12 goes on and it says, so David knew that the Lord had established him. First, it begins, he knew that the Lord was with him. But it wasn't until he had resources and he had people who were willing to help him build that he realized that his time of wondering was over that he was moving towards destiny but he had finally found his spot in destiny and now it was time for him to build from the place where he had finally landed i don't know who you are in this room but i want you to understand that the journey of inheritance is that we move toward where we're supposed to be positioned and then when we are going with the flow and we're moving towards and we're being developed and we're learning all that we have, that there comes a moment where we're no longer moving towards because we're moving up. And when it's time for us to begin moving up, we will have to dare to wrestle with the reality that many of us are more comfortable feeling like things are temporary than we are allowing ourselves to be established. When we are so used to always going with the flow, we may miss the moment where God is turning us into the flow. And when God begins to turn you into the flow, there is a different mentality required. It requires for you to trust this territory. It requires you to trust the people who you are connected to this moment in your life. It requires for you to trust that these resources, I don't know who you are, but I hear God saying a lot of times we talk about not settling. There are some of you who need to settle into where God has placed you and to start building like it cannot be torn down, to start building like you don't have to move, to start building like this identity that you have fought for, like this growth that has been developed in you is here to stay. And when you start building like the work that God has done in you cannot easily be undone it is a sign to the territory that you have been assigned to that I'm not going anywhere I have been established here I don't know who all is in this room but I hear God saying that you are moving to a place in your identity with him where you are no longer the person running from the generational curse, but you are the person who is ready to handle the generational blessings being released in your bloodline. And I hear God saying that I need you to be established in your identity. I need you to be established in your integrity. I hear God saying you've been running long enough. It's time for you to put your stake in the ground because when you put your taking the ground God says I can erect a kingdom around you I can erect the people around you and every resource is already covered and every team member is waiting for you to live in the established
accomplishment of who God has called you to be. So I want to take about five seconds before we pray and let somebody give God a praise from the place of them being established. My Bible says that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I hear God saying that somebody's about to break open a new flow. And when you break open a new flow, I hear God saying that you will lack nothing, that everything you need will be within reach. I hear God saying every person, every tool, every resource is gonna be within reach. The only thing you'll have to be willing to do is give yourself permission to trust that you went through development for a reason. To trust that God did something in you that cannot be undone. And I hear God saying that if you trust it, then I'll build it. If you trust it, I'll give you everything you need. I feel like prophesying in here and we gotta go. But I hear God saying that if you trust it, I will do exceedingly and abundantly. I hear God saying that if you trust it, that you ain't seen nothing yet. I hear God saying that if you trust it, that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. What's gonna happen? as a result of you being established. One indeed you do have an inheritance. And that inheritance is yours for the taking. And I know it's been a long journey and sometimes a hard journey with betrayal and disappointment. But I hear God saying don't modify the vision because the vision has enough capacity to make everything that you've gone through feel like nothing compared to what God has in store for you. So, everything that we said is based on covenant. Hallelujah. It's based on your relationship with God and your relationship with the Holy Spirit. So what I want to do is I want to extend an invitation. Remember how we referenced earlier today that the word not being mixed with faith yeah. profits nothing. What I don't want to happen is for you to hear all of this word and you have heard a lot of word and you have no place to carry it no place to hold it and consequently no way to manifest it so I want to extend an invitation this is going to be a, a varied invitation because we will never hype you and not help you Here's how it works. All of that is contingent upon your belief. Hallelujah. Everything that we said, by faith it comes to pass. So if you're here and you don't know Jesus, Jesus knows you. That is obvious. But you're here and you, you don't know the Lord and you... you you don't have a relationship with the Lord. You have a relationship with inspiration. You have a relationship with good news and positivity and the desire to manifest and all that kind of stuff, which is wonderful. It's beautiful. But we're talking about deeper things. This is kingdom talk. So if you hear and you say, I want not just the word that I heard, but I want the God of that word. I want you to meet us here at the altar. That's you. I just want you to come forward. Meet us here at the altar. Meet us here at the altar. If you're watching via live stream and that's you, just say, that's me. Just say, I, I receive the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody ought to celebrate. The Bible says that heaven rejoices. Heaven rejoices. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Let's get the whole enchilada. 
let's not just get the word let's get the God of the word the God who gave us this word for you if you're here second point if you're here and you know Jesus but if you're honest your life you haven't aligned yourself with Jesus how can I rephrase it you haven't surrendered you and Jesus have a complicated relationship <laughs> and I should say you have a complicated relationship with Jesus because Jesus doesn't have a complicated relationship with you he chose you before he knew that you would be you and so you're you're, you're ready and you may not have all of you don't know the steps or whatever but you know there's a level of conviction the Holy Spirit is here on Pentecost Sunday and the Holy Spirit his job is to convict not to condemn make you feel poo-poo or bad about yourself to convict to convict is to correct to correct is to make you more precise it is to bring you into precision you were created with precision so your life is supposed to be lived with precision so if you're here and you say I have accepted the Lord but I got a complicated thing going with him and I'm ready to to move from complication to alignment I don't know how I just know that's what I want I want you to come and meet me here at this altar as well come on don't worry about who's looking just you stepping out of where you are and into this that's you moving into alignment come on if you're online just say that's me that's me PT that's me that's me say I, I want alignment I want alignment just say I want alignment I want alignment I want alignment Pastor Sarah talked about a flow the flow happens when you get into alignment it is a crazy thing what took you 10 years can take you 10 days when you get into alignment restoration comes when you get into alignment you know what God can do everything that you thought you missed while you were in this complicated state once you get into alignment God restores the years that I promise you I'm prophesying God will make it the Bible says that we're justified God will make it just as if you were in alignment the whole time because those things were reserved those spiritual blessings they were reserved for you he doesn't take what's yours and give and give it to another he doesn't do that it's reserved and God keeps you alive long enough where he presents you with an opportunity to change but here's the thing he knew the moment you were going to say yes anyway that's the beauty of the God that we serve so if you're here and you say you know what I'm going to rededicate my life to God. I'm going to recommit my life to God. I'm going to get into alignment with God so that I can get into the flow. Come on here. Come on here. Come on here because I got one more thing to pray about. Come on. Come on. I see you. God loves you. See, I see you. You thought you were by yourself. You weren't by yourself. You weren't by yourself. Here's the last point of this invitation. This is Pentecost Sunday. And I am going to be completely honest with you you and I need the Holy Spirit it's not going to happen because you're so smart and I believe you're brilliant it's not going to happen because you're beautiful and I believe that you are the fairest of them all it doesn't happen because you're so strong and I see all kind of biceps and, and quads and everything right because I'm looking for that now because I'm on this health kick but anyway it's not because you are so strong. In fact, God says it's not going to happen by your might. It's not going to happen by your strength. It's not going to happen by your bril brilliance. It's not going to happen by your wisdom. It's going to happen by the Ruach of God. The Holy Spirit, the breath of God. You cannot do this without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the difference between you trying and you accomplishing. We're always trying to do something when we're on our strength. I'm trying to get it right. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm trying to stop doing this. I'm trying to do this more. The Holy Spirit is not a trier. The Holy Spirit has already done what we desire to do. So, so how do I get into relationship with the Holy Spirit? Number one, 
believe believe what first of all believe the gospel believe the truth about Jesus everything we spent time with Jesus apart and came together with words that come I mean it's one spirit say yes to Jesus Paul said and that seals you with the Holy Spirit but there's another level some might call it the baptism of the Holy scripture calls it the baptism of the Holy Spirit right so how do I go from me just having this little conviction, this little sensation, and oh, God, I feel it, to, to being overwhelmed by it and filled with it so that it is no longer me, it's me and Jesus. Surrender. It's just surrender. Watch this. The less you rely on you and the more you rely on God and the more you trust God, you decrease so that God increases and you ask here's another the most simplest way how do I get more of the Holy Spirit the Bible says in Luke 11 you can read it ask it's his desire God's not hold back the Holy Spirit like no it says if you ask you shall receive if you seek you shall find if you knock shall it be open unto you how much more of the Holy Spirit will God give to those who ask that's your inheritance. The Holy Spirit is your inheritance that will give you the power to produce the exploits that are a part of your inheritance. If you're here and you say, I don't want to be a religious person. I want to be a spirit-filled, spirit-endowed, spirit-led, spirit-guided person for the rest of my life. If that's you, I want you to come meet me at this altar. We're going to pray for you and we got we to gotta move. Come on, don't delay. Come on, don't delay. And I want my pastors to come up here. All my pastors. I just want my pastors to just begin to move through the crowd. If that's you, just lift your hands like you're getting ready to receive something. This is Pentecost Sunday. On Pentecost Sunday, the Spirit of God came into the room and changed everybody's lives. People were never the same again. They walked differently. They talked differently. They had a new authority. They had new grace. They had new strength. They were able to leave things behind and they were able to lay a hold of what was ahead of them. So Father, I thank you. I thank you for all that are under the sound of my voice in this room and watching via live stream. Those who have given their hearts to you, those that have given they're yes to you God I thank you that you're sealing them right now with the Holy Spirit and I thank you God that they will never ever 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 be the same again I thank you God for those who are saying yes to you I thank you Lord God that because they said yes you are gonna say yes you're gonna open doors for them that no man can shut you're gonna shut doors that no man can open you're making them new I hear God saying I'm making all things new I'm giving you new insides and the new insides I'm giving you are going to produce new outsides for you. Victory, 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 healing, healing, victory, 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 victory. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yep, 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 yep. So fill them with the Holy Ghost, God. May they never be the same again. Never be the same again. Power for the work power for the journey strength 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 move through this house hallelujah it says how much more will i give the holy spirit to those who ask come on take 15 seconds and ask him for more of the holy spirit say holy spirit i need you i want you gotta have you holy spirit that's your inheritance 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 the Holy Spirit is your inheritance I just want to lay hands on him come here come here come here come here, come here. your inheritance because you're hungry are you guys together come here come here come here come here get close to me you too I see you you too come here come here come here come on 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 I see you too young man you too come here come here come here come here come here more of the Holy Spirit more of the Holy Spirit, more of the Holy Spirit, more of heaven's resources, more, 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 young lady, come here, come here, more, 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 come here, more, more of the Holy Spirit, more of the Holy, more, 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 more of the Holy Spirit.
Come here, young man. Come here. More, 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 more. Your life's gonna change forever. More, forever, for more, more of the Holy Spirit. Take over. Take over. Take over. Hear me clearly. Don't take sides. Take over. We got to move because you got work to do. Because you got work to do. I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I feel it. Thank you for your word. I receive it. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for making him who had no sin, all of mine, all of my weakness, all of my limitations, all of my shortcomings, every generational curse you placed in his body, nailed it to the cross and put it to death. And just like he was raised up, because I'm in him, I'm raised up too. Holy Spirit, fill me to the overflow. Fill me until everything that's not like you is crushed. Fill me until I look like you, walk like you, talk like you, move like you, produce like you, build like you. May I never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. God bless you. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious toward you. May he lift up his countenance over you and grant you shalom, shalom in Jesus' name. I love you. Go do it. You know why? Because you're not getting ready. You're ready, you're ready, you're ready, you're ready. You're ready. You are ready. Go get it. Go get it.